we have learned a little bit about the 53-man roster, who our starting players are. Uh, we could bring that up in a little bit. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, about you guys and, and week one and how we're kind of feeling uh, for the Jets versus Panthers. Oh, now I got this over my face. Move it over here, Ryan. Jets versus Panthers. Uh, nice. So, Greenbeam, let me throw it to you first. What are you feeling uh, with this whole you know, week one matchup? Zach Wilson's first game. Well, you know, it's funny, man. Uh, I've been really positive for a long time, but as we inch closer and I start to really look at matchups, uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm just getting a little bit, I think I'm landing a little bit more in a realistic place, which is I have concerns. Uh, now I'm still very, very psyched. And I think uh, McCaffrey might be rusty. You know, there's, there's lots of positives for us, but the truth is, is that we're about to start a whole mess of rookies uh, under a rookie head coach. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Now, like I said, I'm ultimately very, very positive. I think we're going to play well. I can't wait to see Salah's um, passion kind of translate to the field, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, a little concerned right about now. Matt, how are you feeling about this matchup week one? Mostly good. Um, I really think the Jets front four has the potential to wreak havoc on an offensive line that just really isn't good, especially on the interior. So from that aspect, I am uh, excited to see what this defense can drum up, even without, you know, Vinnie Curry, no Carl loss. And I understand all that. They'll still be, you know, developing a pass rush here. I saw a tweet. I forget who it was. I think it was actually someone who writes for PFF. But they said of the Jets' seven cornerbacks on their roster, six of them are first or second year players, and none of them were taken earlier than the fifth round, which is frightening. Like that, that in itself. Like yeah. I love, I love Bryce Hall. I, I get it, and there's potential with a lot of other guys. But that is a frightening statement when it comes to the cornerback room. If the Jets' front four gets home then it doesn't matter. But if they struggle to get to Darnold, then it could very well be a long day. Mm. Yeah, I'll say this. Them not having their starting guard gives me a little bit of hope off the uh, you know the middle of that line. So I'm hoping we can get a lot of pressure early and often on this team. I think Quinn and Williams, Rankins, these guys could feast, send some pressure up the A-gap and really hope that you can rattle Sam because if you get some pressure on Sam, like we've seen in New York, he's going to start throwing off his back foot. He's going to start making mistakes and that's where we could win our secondary. Like you guys alluded to not the, I don't want to say not the best, but definitely uh, there's a lot of youth. There's a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room for growth. Uh, the stat that still jumps out to me, aside from Hardy, who's going to be mainly used on special teams, the dead cap hit for Tremaine Johnson is worth more than the salaries of all our other corners. <laughs> and that just goes to tell you when you have really late round picks and, and kind of no name guys back there, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. This defense is really predicated on the pass rush. And I'm curious to see if we end up getting that type of pass rush uh, without Vinnie Curry and without Carl Lawson. Um, ooh, let's see. How do I get my face? Boom. We're over here. That doesn't look good. Uh, all right. John Rogers says, uh, morning legends. Would you rather Jets lose, but Zach is fantastic or Jets win and Zach makes some mistakes? What would you guys say? How does this go? Interesting. Sorry, I'm just going to play around with this one. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do this. Uh, so, Matt, what are your thoughts? Would you rather Zach Wilson look fantastic or the uh, look fantastic in a Jets loss or have him make some mistakes, but the Jets win. Oh, I have I have follow up questions for John. Uh, number one, <laughs> is this just for this game or the entirety of the season? Number two, how well does Sam Darnold play in this scenario? But despite the answer to either of those two questions, I am leaning more towards just winning. Uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't that the old Al Davis quote, "Just win, baby." So. Uh, I, I will take a win, even if it means that Wilson doesn't look great, because there are still 16 more games where he can look good, and you're already out to a one nothing start. 
Ooh. Green Bean, what about you? What would you prefer? Would you rather Zach Wilson look fantastic in a loss or him look shaky in a win? Uh, well, look, number one, I think it's a really interesting question. It's what we call thought provoking. And I think that's cool. So thank you. Um, I think if Zach Wilson looked excellent or fantastic was the word, like let's say he throws for 330, you know, two, three touchdowns. And then Sam Donald is over there throwing up clams, but we just happen to lose by a point. I think I would be okay with that, showing the progress and still going on that root for a pick thing that I'm going to do later in the year that I'm so excited about. Uh, you know, so I don't know. I think I might be happier. I want to win, but I think just given those two options, like Zach looking like trash and Lou and winning, I don't know. I'd rather just know my quarterback's on the right path and that wins will come i think yeah i think for me i look you obviously want to win but right. if there was a game that i want zach wilson to just go off and look fantastic it's week one like if we wind up losing because we miss a field goal like it depends how we lose if it's like something stupid on like a you know a fumble from a running back or a yeah. muffed punt or a, a late field goal or something like that i would almost be okay with that as much as I want to win, I'd rather Wilson look legit in a game where we're facing our former quarterback because I don't want to sit all throughout this week and just hear all the talking heads go, no, they should have kept Sam Darnold. They should have traded back. There's no way they should have taken Wilson. We know that's the wrong decision either way. Like us as fans understand that the right decision was to move on from Sam Darnold and get the five-year rookie contract with the new head coach and kind of clean the slate. Um but that doesn't change the fact that everyone and their mother is going to be bashing the Jets if that happens. Right. So well, it's really, like Matt, yeah, it's like Matt said on Twitter this week. You know, I forget exactly how you said it. I'll paraphrase, but he's like, "Yeah, man, it's going to be ugly around here. Like, if Sam happens to look yeah. better, Zach looks bad, any of that stuff goes on, it's going to be rough." Overreaction city. I can't wait, <laughs> <laughs> guys. For every twenty-five likes. We get, ooh, you know what? I don't know if Nightbot knows how to do this. I'll try. We'll see if Nightbot <laughs> knows how to do this with this new setup. Uh, for every 25 likes we get, we're going to pick a qualifier to win a shirt at the end of the stream. So all you have to do is drop a like. What are we at right now? We got 66 likes. So we could pick two qualifiers, three qualifiers. We're up to 82. Let's see. Let me, let me throw some Nightbot action in there. See how this works. Hopefully... This uh, audio and visual is a little bit better than the last few streams have been with this setup. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, night butt, David Ogney. David Ogney, you are going to be a qualifier. Nice to see that pop up. Go with, what do we got to get? We got to get four more. Get four more. And let's see if I can rapid fire Nightbot or if I make it go haywire. May not work that way. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. Come on, Nightbot. Oh, all right. We got a uh, Richard Stafford. Stafford. Uh, ooh. Then we got Kurt Mercer. Write him down. Write him down. I think. I think it worked. I think it worked. Now I just got to figure out where that last one is. Come on, Nightbot. Give me one more. Will we get it? Throw another one in there. Yeah, I see you guys saying, oh, man, non-subscribers. No, unfortunately, it's a Nightbot bot. Or it's a Twitch, Twitch. bot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dean. Dean31395. All right, so we got four qualifiers right now. We'll keep an eye on that as we go. We'll pick some more qualifiers throughout the night. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about before we go. Actually, I guess we could get into this. Uh, let's go. Sorry. Banner. There we go. Let's talk about our offense in terms of what you'd like to see this upcoming uh, week. Where do we want to be? Do we want to see a lot of run? Do we want to see a lot of pass? Where are we looking? Uh, Matt, I'll throw it to you first. 
I think they will try to establish the run first. And I know that Tevin Coleman was listed as the starting running back, but no one panic. I, I don't think he is going to be the bell cow on this team. I think they're going to mix it up a lot. I know Michael Carter was like running back 57 on this depth chart, but I also don't think that's going to matter either. Um, I did a video today on why I think Elijah Moore is going to have a big week. And the reason behind that, which I guess is what I'll get into with what I think is going to happen with the offense. While Corey Davis has proven in the preseason that he's a nice safety blanket, especially on third down for Zach Wilson, I think Carolina is going to really put their energy in trying to shut him down and Crowder, if he plays, because they're like the well-known established guys where more there's no tape on him in the NFL because he hasn't played in the preseason and the slot corner for Carolina, I'm blanking on his name already. I just did the video a couple hours ago. I can't remember who it is. He was an undrafted free agent from 2020 who played like four games. Um, so hmm. moral of the story, I, I, I think it leans advantage Elijah Moore. So I think he could have a big day from the slot. Um, so, yeah, that's a really long-winded answer, but hopefully that helps. <laughs> Creepy, what about you? What do you want to see from the offense this Sunday? Uh, I want to see offensive line domination from play one. Uh, I want them to be uh, really focused on establishing, like Matt said, the running game. I want to see this wide zone scheme make their defensive linemen go east to west all day. So they have to start relying on their defensive line rotation, bringing in second and third stringers. Uh, that's what I want to see. I want to see Zach. When he does pass, I want to see him to you know be able to pass with a defense that is on their heels, like kind of not knowing what's going on. I want them to be respecting the run. So when Zach does start throwing the ball around, he's not being chased around like we saw like we've seen Sam Darnold the last three years. And I think that's what they're gonna do, man. Shanahan's offenses are always predicated on establishing the run. The good news is is that it works. It's not just like another team just saying, Oh, we want to establish the run. It's like, no, that's what this model of offense does. This is how they do it. This is what they do, and it works. So I just want to see, most importantly, I want to see our offensive line look like we have an offensive line. That's really, I think, the biggest thing for me, too. The offensive line and establishing the running game is going to be absolutely huge. If you could get that push that we saw in the preseason on that left side. And we didn't even get to see Elijah Vera Tucker yet. Like that's the most exciting thing for me is I want to just see highways <laughs> opened up five lane highways. Let our running backs go screaming through there. Let Zach Wilson just have some time. I don't want to see him get hit. I know this, this Carolina defense is vastly improved from last year, but I have faith that this jets offense, if they can get the ground game going and they can protect Sam, uh, Sam Parnell. They can protect Zach Wilson. I think we're going to be in a really nice spot. I'd love to see Elijah Moore get cooking, like just absolutely yeah. go over the top. Like, I don't even know. Like, I'm just excited <laughs> to see some weapons for the first time in like really a long time, get some actual weapons out on the field and see a, a competent offense. That was something I liked. I felt like every offensive play that LaFleur called during the starters time period felt like, oh, that makes sense. You see the little bootlegs. You see them short in the field. You see right. some play action. Like this is the stuff we didn't get to see out of Adam Gase. Yeah. Now I can I completely agree though, Ryan. I think you know obviously that's a vanilla version of what we're you know going to see, but it mm. already looked like something that we're going to be happy with. It already looked like it was light years from what we've been watching for however even with Jeremy Bates and you know and, and just all the way back we've had kind of stagnant offenses uh with little spurts of success and I think what we've seen from the floor already looks like we have the potential to be exciting I agree Matt anything more to add to the offense uh just what you guys to piggyback off what you were saying that's a good point to bring up elijah vera tucker getting back in the action i don't think people really realize just how bad dan feeney was and how much of an upgrade mm -hmm. it's going to be to both the left tackle and the center to have elijah there instead of dan sorry dan yeah oh man i i love watching like the mullet just like waving but he should be a guy that's reserved for like you know, you send him out when you want him to pick a fight, but you don't want 
your starter to get tossed out of a game. He's that kind of guy. That's the uh, that's how I'd look at him. Friggle D, Friggle D, you have been qualified to win a shirt because we've got over that 125 like threshold. The next threshold, 150. Uh, we'll pick a qualifier at that point. So let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about the defensive side of the ball. What do we want to see? What do we expect to see out of the defensive side of the ball if you are the New York Jets? Green Bean, I'll start with you. Hmm. Uh, well, I think uh, we were talking about it a little bit early. I think the most important thing, and I want to see it from the first play, is that our defensive line can push this offensive line. We're hearing all these stories about uh, you know, how banged up they are. They just lost another starter. The guy that's replacing him wouldn't even normally be the guy replacing him, but Deontay Brown's hurt. So they're banged up, and the guys that they have are not all that good outside of uh, Moton on the uh, you know at the right tackle. I mean, so if we, what I want to see is our guys this is this is the supposed strength of our defense. This is the supposed weakness of their offense. I want to see us being able to get push and penetration from the word go. I want Sam Darnold to think, "Here we go again." Same, you know, same situation, different team. That's what I want to see. And then I'd like to see some pressure taken off our cornerbacks, so, you know, and and linebackers for that matter, so they can kind of ease into the NFL without getting their faces kicked in by the likes of Robbie Anderson and, and, you know, even Terrace Marshall, just all those guys. So I, I think it's about the defensive line. Matt, what do you want to see out of our defense and what do you expect to see? I, I agree with green bean. I think the defensive line is going to be huge, but just to go a, a different route here for this conversation, containing Christian McCaffrey, especially in the receiving game. So I think it's going to be up to either Sherwood or Nasruddin a lot of the time to cover him out of the backfield. And for the first time in a long time, I am much more confident in those guys covering out of the backfield than I was with linebackers in year past, excluding the one game of CJ Mosley in 2019. Um, because I think the Jets don't normally have linebackers with you know good speed. That's usually not their strength where – these guys are converted safeties and I think they will have a better shot of hanging with a running back out of the backfield than a, maybe a traditional linebacker. So I'm kind of curious to see how that plays out here in week one. Yeah. yeah for me, that whole defensive line, Quinn and Williams rankings Lawson, like that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on, eye on John Franklin Myers. Are we going to be able to take advantage of that Carolina offensive line? Can we get Sam Darnold uncomfortable? Can we get after him early? I want to hit him a, bunch i want him to not feel comfortable anytime he goes to take a drop back now christian mccaffrey i think that's where we need to be focused more so than not i would rather sam try to beat us with his arm downfield than christian mccaffrey and i don't think christian mccaffrey had any touches in the preseason if i'm not mistaken so hopefully there's a little bit of rust uh in terms of his play and then God, it's going to be trial, trial by fire for sure with these cornerbacks. Robbie Anderson, Moore, like they got some guys on their on their receiving core that's going that are going to be able to challenge us. And I think they will get open on our young corners. It's just going to be a matter of if we can get the pressure to Sam early enough and to get him to throw the ball, you know, out of bounds, get him to to get off off platform type of throws. And I don't really expect I you know what would kill me? I think it would kill me <laughs> if I see Robbie Anderson go off for like 150 yards and two touchdowns. If that happens Ooh. to us with Sam Darnold, I like pain. Oh pain. god, that's I would say that is the worst case scenario. Like like Sam looks good, Robbie looks good, Jets look bad in a bad loss. That's like the worst right. way you could possibly start this season. So for the love of God, please. <laughs> I don't know if you have to double Robbie, I let everyone else get the, the yardage. Like Christian McCaffrey, sure. DJ Moore, <laughs> sure. Not right. Robbie. <laughs> it's not Robbie. Don't let it happen, please. But I'm, I'm interested to see the linebackers. The linebacker, like you guys said, with the whole, uh, you know, CJ Mosley coming back for the first time in two years. Then you got Nazardine and Sherwood. Are they going to be able to to put a dent in what Christian McCaffrey could do? Greenbeat, I'm sorry. You can uh, go. <laughs> No, no, I was uh, I was jumping in, man. So you know, I, I'm sorry. 
Uh, but uh, the thing, dude, what we have to do, like you said before, we have to make Sam beat us. Like, there's no other game plan here. You have to make Sam beat you. So you bring everybody up. You contest the routes. You play some form of press on their on their receivers. Make everything slower. That's what you have to do. We have young guys all over the place, fast guys. Get up there, push them, delay their routes so the defensive line can rattle Sam. And you, when you do that, you know, you're you're giving your defense a better chance to take away the Christian McCaffrey aspect of the game. The Chuba Hubbard, who's another one, man. He's a dangerous little fella. We liked him coming out. So um, I think that's how you do it, man. You got to be aggressive with this team and make Sam beat you. Matt, anything more to add? I agree with what Green Bean just said. Make Sam beat you. And especially if you're getting pressure, we've seen it firsthand the last three years, what happens when Sam Darnold has pressure in his face. So I think that would be my mindset if I'm Ulbrich or if I'm Salo, just try to get as much pressure in the backfield as humanly possible, especially up the gut, because that's the weak point of this Panthers uh, offensive nice. line and the strength of the Jets defensive line. So that's what I'm looking at. Dude, can you imagine Quinn and Williams like seriously having like a field day? Like that's the yeah. weak point. Like like you just said, Matt. Like it's the interior, and he's playing three tech. If he can have that impact that we've been waiting for, that's been brimming, you know, brewing under the surface. If Quinn and Williams can have like a five pressure two sack day or something like that, just in Sam Darnold's face all day, that would make me so happy because like ryan said i don't want to see sam throwing 50 yard bombs to robbie anderson man so that'll move us into our special teams unit and what you'd like to see out of there now it might be you know pretty basic you want to see them make the field goal kicks right like we've had kicking issues the last two years i think for me what i'm going to look at that's probably the the highlight i don't care so much about the touchbacks and whatnot i would like to see Braden man continue his dominance punting inside of the 20. I want to see more of that because I thought last year while he had some great tackles and well, maybe not so great tackles depending on who you ask, but based on what we got from him last year and what we've seen so far in the preseason, it looks like he's really kind of getting into that rhythm and I'd like to see him continue that, continue to win the field position battle. I think when you're a team like the Jets where we can't really afford to have turnovers, we can't afford to uh, to make those mistakes because those are things that you know teams of our caliber right now just aren't going to be able to overcome. We're not a Tampa Bay. We're not a Buffalo where you could just score on demand, or at least you know we're not really expecting that just yet. Um, so I want to see clean football. I don't want to see any muff punts. I want to see punts inside the 20. I want to see some field goals being made. Uh, Green Bean, anything special teams wise of note for us? Uh, you know, I look, you, you kind of pushed it aside because it's obvious in the very beginning with the field goal thing. Like, yes, you know, it's, a, but we have had such a rocky road with the, with the field goal aspect of our team. It would be really nice if we have two or three opportunities, 48 yards, 50 yards, and we can actually get the three points like that would be such a game changer for this organization it's been rough i mean when's the last time 50 yards you thought oh yeah we got this that's been a long time so i really think that's important and, and i'm very curious to see all these young guys like well not even the young guy but justin hardy we we brought him on to specifically be a special teams demon da uh, daniel brown we kept on the team because of his special teams prowess and there's a lot of other guys that I really, I'm excited to see this team, like as filled with nerves as I can be at times when we talk about, you know, two rookie linebackers, 25 rookie defensive backs and all this kinds of stuff, rookie quarterback. The truth is, is I'm really excited to see this young team and what they can do. Do we know who our punt returner is? I don't even think uh, I'm aware of who it is. And I'm curious to see how we do there too, Ryan. Well, that is kind of a nice little jumping off point that we could – go into right here i pulled up the 53 man roster the depth chart that we're kind of looking at nice. uh it looks like braxton barrios is going to be our main kick and punt returner this year yeah! 